Okay, so our line art's ready, and now before we get to coloring, I want to go over the tools we're going to be using. So I'm just going to make a new document. And first tool we're going to be using is a lasso tool. Now, it might be set to this, which is just a lasso tool, or it might be set to the polygonal lasso tool. The shortcut is L. And I like to use both um, for different reasons. So the regular lasso tool, it just creates selections and it, that's pretty much it. You just draw out selections. Um, but the polygonal lasso tool is much better if you want to create straight lines or if you're not that confident. Uh, especially I used to use this a lot when I used a mouse and let's say I had a curve. Um, instead of using the regular lasso, I would actually just make small points and then create that curve using the polygonal lasso. So polygonal lasso takes more time, but it's a bit more user friendly. Now, the other thing that's important is using the lasso tools. Um, you want to know how to deselect and that's control D. So I draw something, control D to deselect. And you also want to know how to fill it quick. Um, Quickly filling things with the foreground color is Alt Backspace, that'll fill with foreground, or Control Backspace to fill with um, the background. Just Control Z to undo that, and Alt Control Z uh, continues to undo. So if I made a mistake and I Control Z, it'll just go back one stage. And then if I control Z again, it sort of redoes what I just undid. But if I want to keep going back, alt control Z. And so next thing I want to cover is this, which is anti-aliasing. You'll see the option up top here, right beside feather, there's anti-aliasing. And you want to make sure that's off. And why is it important? Well, it doesn't have to be off all the time, but with this technique, it does help to have it off. And the difference is if I turn on anti-alias and I make a shape, right? And I'm way zoomed in, zoomed in 600%. Okay, and I fill that shape. Notice how, mm, let me just use a darker color. Notice how along the edges, it's sort of fuzzy. We don't want that with this technique. So turn off anti-aliasing and then make a shape and it'll be absolutely crisp. So you'll just have this color and then the white. And this is important so that, let's say we wanted to change a color in the future. With this one, there might be a bit of an edge that's not really filled in. Uh, but with this one, it'll be very precise, just where we want it. So you won't get little um, borders to things that are kind of ugly. So that's really important. We're going to be using uh, all our tools with the anti-aliasing off. So the next tool is the magic wand. Now it might be set as quick selection, just hold down and uh, select magic wand, the shortcuts W. And again, in this, you wanna make sure anti-aliasing is off. But now something interesting is this option called contiguous. You also wanna make sure sample size is point sample for this. But what contiguous does is without contiguous, let's say I select this right side one, it's also gonna select the left side one. Basically, anywhere this color shows up, it's going to select it. With contiguous on, if I click this right side dot spot thing, it's going to only select that. So that's the difference. And you want to use it both ways. I usually have contiguous off just because when I make color changes, it's going to be um, affect, I want it to affect all that color. And now the other important thing is tolerance. Tolerance is basically how open the selection is going to be to selecting specific colors. So notice with this one, you've got a little bit of fuzzy around. Now, if I lowered the tolerance or actually increase the tolerance, it's going to be more likely to pick up all those extra colors that aren't quite the main color, but, but that are close. So let's make the tolerance 10 and then click this again. And you'll see it's selecting more 
of those colors. And if I make it 50, it's going to select even more. And if I make it 100, it's basically it's just going to pick any color that's similar to this color, right? Close enough. But for us, we want it to be very intolerant because we just want it to specifically pick that color. And what that allows us to do is let's say I have this brown and elsewhere in the image, I have a brown that's, it's really close, but not quite. With this low tolerance, I just select this and I only get this brown. This is the only one I want to fix. If I had a higher tolerance, um, then if I select this one, it might also select this one. Let's say 100. Then yeah, see it's going to select all these. So we want it to be very intolerant. So just zero for tolerance. Next thing is the paint bucket tool. And again, paint bucket has the same options, contiguous, uh, anti-alias, and it also has tolerance. So we want tolerance zero, anti-alias off, contiguous off, and that's pretty much it. So let's say I wanted to change this color, this brown, to maybe a green. Well, I just take the paint bucket, fill it, and it's going to find anywhere with that specific brown color, and it's going to get rid of it. And see, this is why we don't have anti-aliasing um, on, because if we do, when we fill, we still get that fuzzy border, but without it, it absolutely fills right to the edge. And then the last thing we're going to be using is a soft brush. Now with a soft brush, just select your brush tool. And if you right click the very first brush in Photoshop, the most number one default brush is a soft round brush. Second one is a hard round. So we're going to be using a soft round brush and we want it to be fairly large. So this one's at 400 pixels. And it's also important that your document is big enough. So let's just see how big this document is. And I can just right click the top, go to image size, and it's 2,550 2, by 3,300. And that's a, that's a decent size, that's okay. So in this case, with this image, let's see, it's only 243 by 253, that's, that's too small. So the reason it's small is because this is just a really small sample that I, I'm using just to show you stuff. But otherwise, if it was serious, like this one, um, let's check this one's image sizes, you know, 2,480. So it's a, it, it's a lot larger. And you can go bigger. Bigger is, is fine. You just don't want to get too small because um, then when you use a soft brush, things get a little bit ugly. And what I mean is, see right now, the image is so big, it's like 25%. And, and that looks really smooth. That looks nice. But if I zoom in, and I use the same brush and it's smaller, it just doesn't have the same look. Um, let's just say I make a new image and let's make it really small, 200 by 300. Now when I use this brush, it's just not going to look as nice. So it's not going to be as smooth and so that's why you want a nice big image. And that's it. That's our main tools that we're going to be using. Uh, the lasso tool, the magic wand, paint bucket, and a soft brush.